What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. Welcome to another trucking video. This is your boy Luis wearing a fancy hard hat. Which I got when I was in Mountain anyway for free, so I want it. Um, but we're out here. I hope you guys are having a great week. Uh, I gonna actually going to post a video last week. I may still post that one a little later this week. It doesn't have an ending, so I'll have to probably put an ending to it. Um, we got caught up some stuff last week, but we delivered last week. You'll, you guys probably see that later or maybe before this one. Either way, there's going to be two videos. Uh, this is the next one. This one, we have a coil, and I thought just to go back to kind of my regular stuff that I used to do and is talk about how to secure a coil, in this case, a shotgun coil. So we're going to go back to a little bit of basic and maybe for you, our rookies still looking at the channel for tips and tricks. This is going to be one of those videos. So we already got loaded. I'm going to turn the camera around here real quick. But we already got loaded with the coil, and I got two chains on it. So... It says 38,000 pounds um, coil. We're gonna put four chains and this is shotgun. Shotgun just for the rookies again because it's the hole in the middle is pointing forward towards the truck. We got several trucks coming in here with me so I apologize for the extra noise but hopefully the new mics help. Um, so I'm gonna be talking and just let it play as I'm working so you guys can check it out. And uh, this is gonna be no time however long it takes top video it shouldn't take me too too damn long but um, basically I got two chains thrown in around already uh, I put bungees I'm gonna show you a little trick a little later but I put bungees before I put that edge protect edge corner protector right there I throw the chain and I take a bungee to hold the chain a little bit of tension in the hook down the bottom down the bottom and uh, be that way unless we put that uh, edge protector over there before I put the uh, binder, whether you use a ratchet binder or a snap binder, I use snap binders, um, but it lets me do that. In the beginning, I remember the first coil I did, guys, it took me several hours to figure out because those damn things kept falling off of me and my trainer wasn't telling me what to do. Um, and uh, it took me, he kept falling off from one side to another, I was trying to tie the chains. And then he taught me the trick. Uh, I don't know if it was Sam or somebody else, but putting a bungee, from that to the other side of the chain, you know, that way you put a little tension and you can pull it, separate it a little bit with tension and it'll keep those edge protectors in place while you throw the chains in. But I got two more chains to put in and then we're gonna tarp it and I'm put the straps on the outside to keep the tarp in place as well. So it serves for two purposes. But we're gonna put uh, enough securement, total of uh, eight forms of securement or eight straps, four chains, four straps, and uh, that, that will cover the load. So. I'm gonna go up and climb up there and get the uh, chains put in. I could have thrown the straps over it and you're probably asking why you're gonna throw the, uh, I'm behind you guys so you guys can't see me. So I don't have a camera person, so. <laughs> you're probably gonna ask, why don't I throw the straps before I put the, the uh, tarp over it, which I got coil bags, I got two of them. I'll never use two at a time, but I got a second one. So, but the reason I don't do that, um, well, I, you know, you can do that too. It's just fine. You can put it under the tarp. You can put it above the tarp. It doesn't matter. But I decided to start putting it over the tarp. It helps keep my tarp in place um, also at the same time. So it helps two purposes. I don't got to put that many bungees outside the tarp. So that's why I'm throwing the straps on the outside rather than on the inside. So we're going to throw our chains in. So... Another little tip and trick. Throw, throw, all your, throw all your chains through before you head back down to secure them out there, which you can also do from the edge, but at least throw everything through first. Now, we're gonna go to the other side, so you're gonna come with me. So you wanna throw everything through all the chains. I said, I'm only putting four. If I, was putting, if I was putting five or six, I would throw more. Um, more chains so hopefully you guys can see me there I think I got the wide angle so uh, you guys can see what that way you guys can see what I'm doing but I already have the first chain on this side the chain is pulling on that side so we're gonna alternate so I'm gonna pull on this side of the chain on this side and the opposite way over there so you want to pull from either side not put all the binders on the same side either you guys should know that, but if not, you always want to alternate and pull on, on all your loads. 
not everybody agrees to that, but that's the way I learn and I agree with that. That way it pulls evenly from both sides. So that means the binder on this side, on your right, the binder is going to go behind and the binder on this opposite side is going to go on the other side. So it's one thing I do. Now you want to have an angle to the bag. The first two straps are very close to the coil, uh, pulling for an each size, pulling away from it, very close to the coil. The second one is going to have a little bit of an angle. If you had to put more than four, you had to put six, then you want to give space in your pockets and your, your uh, pulls, your stay pulls and your pockets on, on the rail guard, on your rail, on your rail um, to make sure you have space for each change. But the more change you pull, the more of an angle you're pulling. Uh, the the coil or whatever you secure. In this case, you're only putting four. So this one's going on the opposite. So I'm going to put most change. So another thing that I've learned to do is on this side, so I don't have that much leftover chain on the other side to be wrapping around my binder. I'm going to pull more of the chain and hook it higher in this side of the chain. Make sure you put it on the opposite angle so that way the hook stays put. And uh, this side, that's what we're gonna pull. We're gonna do the opposite over there. I'll be right back. Keep you back and forth. So I'm over here, I don't know if you can see me, but I'm on your right side of the screen. Do the opposite. The binder's gonna go on that side. So I'm gonna pull more chain over here. So I have less change left over. Now I'm rolling to the other side. So you guys can see me now, but I'm on your left side of the screen and the binder's gonna come on this side. So as you can notice, I'm pulling the chain. I'm going on the rub rail and hooking it kind of short over here. So this is where the binder is going. So I'm making sure that my edge protector, this, this coil particular has already a very hard edge protector. So you probably can say I'm overdoing it with this one, but that is fine. That is fine with me as well. So I'm gonna steal the bungee over here that I used. And I'll show you on that side what I'm doing over here right now. That way you guys can see it, but give me a second. All right. See, I have, I put the bungee on the side. I got a little tension here. But I'm gonna use the edge of this metal edge protector instead of putting another one. But now on this side, we're gonna this this way. So let's say, I'm gonna demonstrate it. Let's say I wanted to put that there, right? If you don't put any tension, this thing's gonna keep on moving. But this is a trick. Take the bungee out of this side. And it should be, probably you say, oh, it's common sense, but somebody doesn't teach you you probably won't do it so let's say this is off I'm gonna take this off I'm gonna pull as much as I can now I'm gonna put the bungee up here hook it and, look, and now I'm gonna put tension on the bottom by the hook so now I got tension on it okay let me show you I'm gonna bring you in close so you guys can see so I'll pull put the bungee I got tension on the edge on the top. So now I got tension on it. So now I can put the edge protector, and just push under it. I'll just pinch my finger on the edge of that. <laughs> but I can push under it and have tension. Sorry if I'm moving the camera, guys. But I'm doing this one-handed. And I can go on the other side. See, that's what I did right there. I put tension, I'm gonna use that edge. But over here, sorry, putting tension on it. I put it higher. I have a little too much slack over here. So I'm gonna fix that real quick. Give me a second. So I need my hands for that. That is because 
I'm going around the pocket. There we go. Just put a little more tension. Which is fine. And then put it one eye, snap it over there. That's gonna pull. That's gonna pull it straight. So that's not a problem. All right. Okay. All right, we'll double check that, but that's good. So now that I have the edge protectors on there, now I can go ahead and put the binders to hold it more in place. And uh, set you guys back here again. I'm just making sure you guys can see me. Hopefully you can. But now I can put the binders in place. I'm not going to tie them up here. I'm, I'm going to do that from the bottom. But I can set them up from up here and make sure I got the right tension. Something else I got to show you guys with the hooks. Something then takes a minute to learn. Sometimes. Okay. I'm going to bring it. And I'm taking my time because I need to get my two hours split right here. So I'm not in a rush. Um, all right, so one more thing that I learned is I'm going to point you at it so you kind of know what I'm talking about a little better. You don't need to look at my face for this. But if you're using a snap binder, um, we're using a ratchet binder. And I know you guys in the comments are going to say, oh, right, that's why ratchet binders are better and faster. Because you can open the, the binders, hook, the, hook it, and just ratchet, and it'll pull it apart together, right? But I use snap binders. For me, they're a little bit faster. Uh, I'm used to them. I do want to give me some different type of ratchet binders, not the normal ones that I think are a little more professional and easier. And it will serve the same purpose, but also they lock in place. Um, I've, I have a couple of ratchet binders and they're hanging all rusty uneasily over there because I haven't used them at all. Uh, if I need to use them, I got oil, I'll throw them and I use them if I have to use all of them. But if you guys can really see over there in my uh, head of rack, it's hanging there. The bottom is on the box. So <laughs> that's why I haven't used them. But I'm used to these. A lot of people say, oh, they move. Yeah, they move. They loose a little bit. You can double check it. They're still loose. You can retie them. Now, the trick to, to this is um, they teach you binder. They teach you to be more than 90%, right? Right there is more than 90%. But for me, that's a little too loose. That's, that's a little way, three quarters way in to try to just snap it in place. It's not gonna put that much of attention in. So you just want a little bit more, right? What happens? You would think, we'll just hook the binder one, uh, whatever you call it, one connection higher, right? Well, if you do the one connection higher on the hook of the binder, your, your actually snap, is, instead of being kind of like right here, it's gonna be probably more than what you want. So, in order to get a smaller, a small adjustment, you want to make the small adjustment instead of on the binder, you want to make it here on your teal drop. Okay, your teal drop gives you one link that you go on your teal drop. It's like half a move on your binder, but a one link on the binder is like a full move. Whatever that space is, I don't know how many inches it is or whatever, but just consider that it's one full on the binder. It's a longer adjustment on your binder but if you do it one full length on the teardrop, it's half of the adjustment. So if you only want from here, this is where I feel the tension. If you only want to go here, feel the tension, then I'm gonna go at the teardrop. Now if I'm way down here, way loose, and I want more tension, then I'll hook it at the binder, I'll change it, and then I'll get that bigger adjustment. So that's a little trick to let you know why the teardrop is important, but adjusting here makes a difference on this then adjust it then adjust it on your snap binder and that doesn't matter if this if it's your snap binder or a ratchet binder but it does matter less on the ratchet binder if that makes sense to you so uh all right so let me pull back and that's pretty much set i gotta set the other one on the other side and then my bar's right over here so i'm gonna put it close to the edge and this I don't, i'm not gonna use it so i'm gonna put it over there so now we're gonna go on this side. I'm gonna turn this a little bit so this doesn't hit the edge. And then we're gonna do the same thing over here. So, again, hope you guys, sorry for the vibration. 
Well, hope you guys can see me. Scoot you back a little bit. A lot of movement, guys, but I'm the only camera person in here. Can't be that fancy. So, this is real life what we gotta do out here, not just a fancy, you know, transition effect. So, real time. So, hook. You also want your hooks on your binder to be facing both sides the same direction when you put them on the chain. So, if you got them in this direction, you want them both facing that direction. If you one is twisted a different direction, your chain is, your binder is going to twist on you when you're trying to snap it in place. Just keep also something to keep out. I've had him snap and move on me because I didn't pay attention to that. And then the, to loosen him up, this snaps in place, but it snaps close to the bed, the flat bed. And then when I'm trying to get it loose, it's a pain in the ass to do it, to get it off of it, to adjust it. Or even if I leave it like way to get it off at the receiver. So. Make sure your hooks, to prevent from that to happening, make sure your hooks are both facing the same direction on the chain. Um, and you have a better chance of that not happening. All right. So, again, I'm way loose over there. I want half adjustment. I'm doing it in the tool drop. I'm not doing it in the binder. So that was half. Like you can see, now I'm there. See, I got a bigger tension now. But that was a small adjustment. If I would have moved the binder, it would have been a big adjustment. Now I gotta do the same adjustment over there, but I'm gonna get my bar, we're gonna tie this one up. So give me a second. So I did not do the adjustment on this side. No, I did not. So, adjustment until drop, I get what I need. All right, I'm coming to get you. I'm coming to get you. That should be fun. All right, so, like I said, we're gonna climb up here again. Oh, sorry, because we gotta tow the tarp. So, I'm gonna snap this side, set you guys here. Again, sorry for all the movement, it's a tour. We're gonna put up here. And always go to the end, stay away. One hand, I know you guys can probably see me, but again, this is for the rookies. So you guys know what I'm talking about. I mean, I'm not sure you, you worry about it, but put one hand on the bar if you can see it right there on the edge. But I always put one hand to hold myself and it's away from me. So if it slips my hand, it's happened once. <laughs> but if it slips my hands or anything, uh, if I need more force, I got both hands to put force in it. But this gets me in there, and then straight down. So you can see this, or well, you should see this right here, it's facing this way. If I would have twisted the hooks, this could have ended up flipping on me like that, and then, you know, to loosen up, it's gonna hit this, and it becomes an issue, so you don't want that. So now that I got that in place, I can use this bungee, see if we can flick her off without having to go back up there. There we go, got it. And then I'll use this chain, this bungee to secure this chain and the chain from my other binder with just one bungee. Make sure this side is tight, it is. And you saw this one, this side loose. The only thing that's loose is the, the chain that's hooking over. But the, it's putting that pressure on the chain as needed. So we'll check it later on. Worst case scenario here is that I have to loosen the, um, the tarp on this side, but I gotta, you know, and, and redo that one if anything moves a little too much or anything moves too much. I'm just making double check, all good. Now I got the chain, so we're gonna do the other side. So again, you guys can see there, one bungee over the secure both sides. So now we go to the other side and uh, finish that side. And then we gotta throw our tarp. Like I got coil bags. Um, if you are a owner of or lease of or coming into this section, definitely coil bags are awesome. <laughs> coil bags are awesome. They are a little bit pain in the ass to fold, um, but they're way faster to put on and secure on a coil, so. All right, so I'm doing the same thing over here, guys. Don't need to watch out if you put it too high and you're short like I am. 
Man, I get no sn your, your bar right there, but I got it there. Hopefully, you know, goes, doesn't go against you. Go up, both hands down. Now I can press it down. It's in there. Let's see if I can. Oop. The bungee hook got hooked on the camera. There we go. It got hooked on there. See if we can get it off also. Come on. There we go. On the hook. Go over the snap. We're going to do two on this one. Hook it on here. Roll the chain on the other side. Hook it over. This one got a little more extra chain. Because it's not on an angle as much as the other one. So we went over a couple times. Stretch it in. Hook it on there. I just try to make sure the hook is facing to the inside or so it doesn't get caught on the um, coil back. So, all right. So now you got the option, sorry. So now you got the option to you either, um, you can throw your straps in this case, shotgun, you can throw your straps over the side and then put your uh, tarp or like I'm gonna do, I'm gonna throw the tarp and then do the coil, then do the straps over it. So. I'm gonna put you guys on the back. I think that's the best place to put you in. Now, to the front. I want you guys see me putting this thing on. So, it's a little tricky at first, but once it falls in, it's one, two, three, so. Uh, you guys should be able to see good enough there. Like I said, this might not be fully straight and all that. I'm trying to be, no camera, perfect. We're gonna climb up here. We can climb for the back, like the safety boys. Or I can use my box. I might be 44, but uh, I still got flexibility. <laughs> All right, so let me open this up. So, I say a coil bag is it's really a bag, and I always, um, I'll try to show you when I untarp it, but I always fold it. I know you guys can see it, but I fold it inside out. So when I take it out, when I'm putting it over the coil, it's, uh, I can just push it over. So, the trick part is to find which side it's going to go over the side and which side is going over the coil. All right. So that's going over the coil. Now, like I said, a little pain in the ass at it. This coil is big. I got to throw it over. I got to throw the top part of it really on the coil. So, if you use these and set it up differently and let me know because for me this has always been just the hardest thing you got to pick which side you're going to pull over and say the tarp is inside out so now i'm just like folding it through gotta make sure it doesn't fall Wrap around, inside out, nine falls in position. And it has some grooves right here, hooks. Because it's shotgun, if it was suicide, the hooks, I would want them on the outside, on the longer side of the coil um, where the hole's at. But because it's suicide and it's not as narrow, I want it on the opposite side. But it does have hooks on both sides. That's it. It's pretty much on there, guys. Make sure my flaps down. There we go. One, two, three, couple of bungees, and I'm done. But just making sure it's kind of even as much as possible. It's not going to be perfect because. This is a pretty large coil bag for large coils. Very large coils, and about a little bit smaller, then it just stays a little bit loose. But I'm gonna get my straps and I'll be right back. Instead of moving you guys around over and over again. Um, 
get also my bungees while I'm at it. And I won't need a whole lot of bun bungees, but I'm gonna put them right here on the side of the rail rail for right now. And we need four straps. They're gonna be close to each other. Also alternating pool. So two thrown from one side and two thrown from the other side. Or you can throw them all from the same side. Don't matter, just throw one hook. The other one you don't throw the hook. However you wanna do it. I always suggest alternating pools. So four straps, like I said. Just make sure you guys can see what's going on here. Oh, I had you just fine, didn't I? Yeah. It's not straight. There we go. All right, so again, before I throw bungees in, I'm going to throw these. And I usually kind of look where the edge is at. This side, I'm going to throw straps. Roll it. Throw it over. This one. I'm gonna throw the hook. This side, so I'm gonna let it fall. So it's gonna be right over here. So they're, they're gonna be pretty close to each other. Maybe a couple of them, these two metal ones are gonna be very close to each other and the ones on the side are gonna have a gap on the side maybe. That's also, you gotta keep, keep an eye where you're throwing your chains. So, let's see. I'm gonna fit it through here, nope. All right, I'll throw this chain and send my way. So this is what we're gonna do. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? This one. I'm gonna move over. All right. I got a chain here that the hook is like on the way for me to throw the strap, so I'm not gonna do that. So I'm gonna move this one right next to this one on the edge. I'm gonna move them back over. So they're gonna be pretty close to each other, but it still serve the same purpose. I'm trying to get hooks. Just gonna move them once. I'm gonna throw the hooks in this one. The other side. We'll do it here. All right, so I know you guys can probably see me there, so I'm gonna go to the other side. Just make sure to put them in the pockets on the rope rail the way I want to. Like I said, I'm taking my time. Someone, I'm used to speed walking, so I'm used to go, go, go. But I actually have a little bit of time right now. On that thing. My hooks didn't fall all the way over. So I'm gonna climb up there. I thought they fell all the way over and they didn't. So I'm climbing up here. Let me start tying on this side. It's a little chilly, it's about 57 degrees over here. And we are in Lipstick, Ohio, by the way. Anybody care to know? That's where we're at.
Bingo. All right. Last thing what I'm doing here is I'm gonna put a, a bungee right on the edge of this. And I'm gonna put a bungee here on the edge to pull inside before I strap it down. Another thing that you could do as well is um, especially on, especially on suicide, which is the opposite way. Another thing that I like to do, is I'm gonna put a, put a bungee here at the end, pull this in. And I wanna pull this in and I'm gonna hook it on the other side because the wind's gonna pull this way anyway, so. You don't want to try to pull it forward because the wind is going to fight it and could break your bungee. So. Hook it on the other flat, this back here. And have that pull this way. Another way you can do it is also hook it to the chain on this side because and then you can take the flap on the back side and pull it towards the back. Just remember wind direction. It's another thing that is easy to forget when you're putting these up. This is your wind direction. When you put in your, uh, the way you put your tarp, it doesn't matter what you're tarping. Just remember your wind direction. And you don't wanna put a pocket where the wind is gonna get caught. So I'm pulling you guys closer. So I'll pull in there. And I hooked it right there on the chain. So it just pulls this way. Now this flap, you say we can go in there where the wind is gonna hit it and then so the sun can let you. The wind is going to hit it from under and it's going to be doing this, right? It's going to be pulling and pulling and pulling, which is fine, but it's also fine to just take this and open it back and pull it backwards um, because the wind comes this direction. So if, okay, well, it's going to rain. If it's going to rain, you're driving in that direction. The water's going in this direction. It's not going to go in. Very unlikely to happen, right? Not that it can happen. I'm just saying, it's a little unlikely to happen. So, okay, I'm just trying to show you everything that I'm doing. But I can put a, this. And I've done it both ways, guys. I'm gonna be honest. I've done it both ways. I've done it pulling back here inside and outside, all kinds of ways. I've tried it all. It just really depends on how I'm feeling. All right, so I'm gonna pull this corner. Go in the rubber, definitely, and not around the pockets. You don't want to do bungees around the pockets. I definitely suggest not to do that because it hurts. I'll put it through here. Actually, instead of the corner, I'm gonna grab this hook right there. If I can pinch that corner this way, you can go here, wherever. I'm going there and pull that. I got to pull it from the other side. So come, I'm going to take these two bungees, bring you out with me again. A lot of movements. Gentleman behind me is like, what the hell is this guy's doing with this video? It's probably not a YouTube guy. <laughs> but he has his almost done. He has a big old coil bag. It looks larger than this one. All right. Just to be able to see. So see, I'm pulling on that side. So now it's got to put a little more tension here. So I'm already pulling. Over there, let me put it back here. Pull, I can go up, pull here, and pull there. All you want to do is create tension on it. I still haven't tightened my straps. I'm going to fold these a little bit, but I'm going to make sure that I got enough well, I fold it in or out, it really don't matter because the straps are going to also pinch it. And that's what I want. I want the straps to, to pinch the corner of it. Um, it helps keep them in place. Sure, I got my winches. Just need two. And again, I can grab this. And go straight down. Right here. Pinch that corner of the tarp and come over. You can go down, you can go across, park here, whatever. Whatever fills your boat. 
The whole point is how you put tension on the tarp. And you guys should know how to do the straps, but for your basics, pull it through, make sure it's straight, fold it, run it through the bottom, because it's tarp. I'm gonna push, push it a little bit under the tarp, just make sure the rest of it it is pinch here. So it doesn't come loose and flying out because the wind takes it. I like to make sure it's nice and straight. Sure. Just gonna grab the edge of my tarp right there. Do the other one. It's just hand tight. You know, as far as I can. This side, this one. I'm gonna go to the other side and I still gotta put probably I shouldn't have to put more than four bungees on each side of the tarp. Uh, maybe a total of six, counting the ones that got to go on the inside, which actually I haven't put one on this side. Now I show you how to put one on the other side and I haven't put one on this side. So I'll do it here in a second before I tighten these. I probably may need to lift it, maybe not, we'll see. So, so I need to do the front. Oh. I'm gonna go get another bungee be right back. So I got my bungees on the other side. Now you should just grab a stack of bungees. A small stack when I do the straps on the outside because I don't need a whole bunch of them or whatever. However, you haven't set up to scrap a stack of them. And if you do it this way with a coil bag, you can. Now if you have a big tarp, of course, you're gonna need to see bungee. See where the hook is at. I'm pulling the front to the back when I show you. We're gonna go to the chain right here. There it is. Boom. So, this one set. The whole idea of that is to cover the coil as much as possible. They are protected in the sense that they have, you know, it's wrapped with a plastic and all that kind of stuff so it's not the end of the world they get a little bit you go under use the positions on the bottom too you got all kinds of places where you can put bungees guys it's not just on the hooks of the tarp so don't break your head trying to put it exactly in the same spot all the time let's see i'm just gonna put one there but i really don't think i need to it's all about Minimalistic. Right. Tying these straps. So let's go as hard as I can. Another way you can do it, if you can see me right there, you should. I put my forearm way to the elmo or the edge. So my forearm. Hold on to the rub rail. Hold body weight. You get that extra push down. Now you gotta watch your rub bro. Your, your forearm, I've gotten cut by the edge of the bar. You know, more than a scratch. So, just watch yourself. If it's sharp on that edge, just cause that little pocket gets scratched with metal, with the chain. There we go, we're tight. We're just gonna tight the other two side. Got an extra bungee here. Come on with me. Hope you guys are learning something so far. If you are, hit the like button for me. If you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. I surely appreciate it. If you're learning something, just hit the like button for me. Comment below, let me know it helped you a little bit. Put you on this side, guys. Helped you in something. That's the whole point of what I'm doing. All right, so just gotta put these down. I'm gonna do a little twist. I didn't twist it on both sides. I really care on this. I really don't care. I so really don't. Not on these particular ones. So we'll do that. You know what? This bungee. I want you to go here. So I want you to grab this corner for me, bungee. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, mind you, 
Make sure the opposite side because I don't want you to fuck up my strap. Right. Same thing on this side. From the straps again, you don't have to put the straps over the top. You can put the straps under like the gentleman behind me did and put the tarp over it and put all the bungees you need to put in. Now, I can do that sometimes, especially on suicide coils. But when I do that, and I put the, uh, it's mostly changed. When you do suicide coils, you're gonna have mostly changed. And I say mostly because you're gonna have more chains than this. If this was suicide, I would have put probably at least six chains on this coil and two straps. Still the same number of securement points, but I would have put six chains and two straps. But the two straps will go crisscross above the tarp also because I like that visualization when I look under, when I look in my rear view mirror, or my side mirrors, actually, because that's the truck's rear view mirror. When I look in my side mirrors, I can see those straps holding that coil. It just gives me a mental peace of mind <laughs> that that's uh, holding it that direction. But I crisscross them over the top. Um, I may have a video that it's like that. You guys can check them out, but on the coil ones. But if not, next time I do one, I would do the same thing and show you guys how I put those. All right, so I just need one bungee here. Hold this corner. In place. Pull there. Got you there. And let's time this up. We're pretty much done. Probably faster than I need to be. So like I said, I'm doing a split for the first time. So for the first time, I'm doing a split on the clock. So I started driving last night. I'll tell you guys that in a second. Let's get this time up. Screaming, huh? You hear him screaming. Alright. See him come with me. Alright, and uh we're done guys. We are, are done. Four chains, four straps. Oops. We're done. So how many bungees? Probably like six. Got an extra edge protector, so I'm gonna put that up. So come with me. So we're all done. Is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. Do I need it to be perfect? No, I don't need it to be perfect. So am I worried about being perfect? No, I'm not worried about being perfect. So you say enough, right? Um, yeah, perfection, it's your choice. Does it look pretty? Definitely not, let me see. Does it look pretty? No, it does not look pretty, but it does the job. And that's all I care, this particular moment. But uh, all I care is to do the job because I hear guys, you gotta hustle if you're not. Well, you guys can see me now, but if your wheels are not turning, you're not making cash. If you're not making cash, then you're wasting your time. So if you're, whatever you're under control, whatever I have under control, I take care of it. I'm sorry, I'm trying to lock this in place. So I got locks for all my stuff. Because some people out here, brother, some people out here just want to steal everybody's crap. So, my stuff is always locked. Um, yeah, not pretty. Check it out. A gentleman is over there still putting his things, and he's doing his thing. <clears throat> so, he wants to make sure it looks pretty and doesn't flap a whole lot. I do not care. That's gonna flap a little bit right here in the front. That's loose. That's gonna flap over here a little bit. On the sides, because the straps is on the outside, they're not gonna flap outside, which is what I care. So that way I can have a visual on the side of my trailer. But I don't care if that's flapping or in the back. I don't, I really don't. But um, just a couple of bungees and let's tarp. Now where this is going, oops, sorry. 
this load, let me turn the house out, I can hold you better. This load is going to, um, ding my mirror, my camera's lenses are a little dirty, but this load is going to uh, Talladega, Alabama, uh, to deliver tomorrow, but not, the appointment is not to 7.30 at night. So there is a chance, um, depending how many hours I get, to drive with a split because again I, my clock I haven't done a split so let me let me explain that what I'm at it um, I drove two-part video huh? <laughs> oh tutorial so let, let me go inside the truck sorry ah, hold on a second guys let me go inside the truck all right so I left last night which is Sunday so um, I broke my rule I broke my rule of leaving on Monday uh, on this particular week because the holidays are coming and I need to make sure I maximize my weeks as best as I can with what's available on the road which I already told you guys that in another video we can talk about it again but I left Sunday and I started driving I didn't leave to the house for about 5 30 by the time I was done with my other businesses uh, of clients that I had on the weekend took care of that then of course wash my clothes make sure all set up got on the road about 5 30 to, uh, my delivery uh, was uh, in just outside Detroit, Melvindale, Melvindale uh, Michigan, um, about two hours north from here. We're in Lip Liptic, Ohio right now. Um, but that was delivery, and today I had to get there by noon. I drove all the way to Franklin, Ohio last night, uh, which is a little bit more than halfway point. Left me about three hours and 20 minutes to drive to get to delivery. But I didn't stop till almost 11 due to a little bit of traffic and stuff. So if I do my 10 hour at 11 o'clock, I couldn't leave till nine. I had three and a half, that's do the math, 12.30. Past the 12 o'clock cutoff time for delivery. So I, let my, I did an eight hour split. So sleep at birth eight hours, and now I'm gonna wait two hours to complete my uh, split. And it's the first time that I do it with the KT system. Now the way the split, I can explain how that works in a different video. I'm not getting to that now, but uh, we'll see how many hours I get in the split system. I'll let you know at the end of the video how many hours I got. So stay to the end if you want to know um, of the video. That's why I'm, I'm going to let you know what I got. But I did eight hours, slip at birth, got running around the, at that point it would be 7 a.m. Um, running at 7 a.m., delivered and came over here. And like again, I came over here, had an hour, about an hour, 10 minutes on my clock to drive, but I'm on my split um, and about three hours on my uh, 14. But um, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to wait the two hours here and see what happens because you have to do sleep at birth for seven or eight hours. Um, and then the two or three hours has to be at least off duty. So uh, that's what I'm doing now. And uh, I'll get back to you at the end of the video, let you know how many hours I got back after that and how it worked out for me. So, but for as far as tutorial for the coil, hope that helped. If it did again, hit the like button if you haven't yet, consider subscribing if you are not a subscriber, I should appreciate it. But comment below, let me know if you have any questions on what I did. Uh, if there's a different format that you would do it, put it down in the comments. Uh, probably just take a picture of this and I'm gonna put it on the community tab. Um, posting it when I post the video I'll put it on a community tab as well so you guys can comment there maybe I'm not I'm not sure yet if the community tab allows you to put some pictures you guys but if at least you can comment there too um, but you can comment down below in the video on how you will secure it if it was you and let me know again it's about it's under 40,000 pounds 38,000 pounds and change so let's say 39 to round it up so you, you can comment let me know how you would secure it if any differently or how you like to do it um, other than that I appreciate it, guys. Hope it's helped. Till next time, Wolf Friday out. Peace.